so much, uh, Scott, and uh, the other conference organizers, and thank you for everyone turning out on such a beautiful, warm day for this uh, event. Um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Scott correctly underscored the importance of uh, China's maritime militia. It is really uh, one of the very few, if not the only other, together with Vietnam's uh, maritime militia, such irregular force in the world to be involved in upholding quote unquote maritime rights and interests. So to understand China's security efforts at sea, it's necessary not only to understand China's Navy and China's maritime law enforcement forces, four of which are coalescing into a Chinese Coast Guard, but also uh, the maritime militia. And I think the fact that Vietnam is really the only other country to approximate such a force frustrates foreign understanding of this because mo the vast majority of other countries don't have uh, such a force. Uh, let me highlight a, a few points that I think are most important. You can find elaboration on these subjects in our SIMSEC series on the maritime, the leading maritime militias of <coughs> Hainan province. Fortunately, not yet a reality show. I hope it will, uh, I hope it will stay that way. Um, but as I hit each of these, on each of these points, I will, uh, I will go to what I think are the key dynamics and then suggest what I think may be in store for us as we watch this uh, issue in the coming months and continue the series. So the first theme I want to address is participation in actual uh, incidents. Uh, the, the maritime militia, which China has developed in some form since virtually, uh, virtually since the founding of the People's Republic in 1959, certainly since the early 1950s, um, this, uh, this, this force is broad and diverse, and uh, in terms of the maritime capabilities for rights protection, uh, sovereignty claim promotion that we're talking about, it's only a small set of units at the pinnacle that we're really concerned with here, hence the, the focus of our SIMSEC uh, series. But within those units, there's been tremendous participation in events of great significance already. This is not uh, just theoretical. In the 1974 Battle of the Parasol Islands, for instance, of which uh, my colleague uh, at the Naval War College, uh, Toshi Yoshihara, has just published an excellent article in the latest copy of Naval War College Review. Uh, trawlers uh, 402 and 403 from the maritime militia played a decisive role, not even just a diversionary role. They were at the center of, uh, of the action. Um, then more recently, from 2009 to the present, in uh, several international maritime incidents, we've seen uh, important participation of the maritime militia. I would highlight especially the 2009 impeccable incident, which Connor will, uh, will touch on in uh, his remarks, but of the five Chinese vessels that surrounded the U.S. Uh, survey ship in international waters, two of them are fishing trawlers that we can trace directly to China's uh, maritime militia. Then more recently in 2014, in the SY, uh, H, uh, sorry, HYSY-981 oil rig incident with Vietnam, in which China used a variety of forces, uh, naval, uh, coast guard, and maritime militia to surround uh, its uh, oil rig and fend off the incoming uh, uh, Vietnamese vessels in disputed waters, maritime militia vessels uh, too uh, played, a, played a key role here. We can also document clearly these are not uh, these are not some mysterious forces. Uh, these are no sea phantoms, uh, if you will. Um, they report directly uh, to a People's Liberation Army chain of command through local People's Armed Forces detachments, the upper level of which are staffed by active duty uh, PLA officers. So we can trace uh, the utilization of this. Uh, force uh, directly in part to a PLA chain of command. And I think that's extremely significant. 
I think, and I am optimistic that there will be future U.S. government public messaging on this subject, because I think a more direct U.S. government explication of this state actor nature of China's maritime militia is very important to avert misunderstanding in any sort of unintended encounter that we might have uh, in the future. Moreover, there is an extremely close connection with uh, the PLA Navy uh, itself. Uh, we have documentation, including through photographic evidence, of uh, Chinese maritime militia units receiving training directly from the PLA Navy. And I believe uh, through P uh, Xi Jinping's uh, ambitious uh, PLA reforms, which will result in a downsizing reportedly of roughly 300 million, uh, uh, 300,000, excuse me, uh, PLA uh, personnel, um, some of these personnel are going to be shifted to another set of books rather than demobilize entirely. And in the maritime sphere, I think the PLA, uh, the maritime militia may be the beneficiary of, uh, of some of that. In terms of motivating these irregular forces uh, in uh, actual risky uh, contingencies, uh, there's evidence that uh, local uh, governments on Hainan province and elsewhere are uh, working to devise policies that will actually make patriotism pay, if you will. And we've uncovered specific evidence in uh, Hainan, uh, Hainan province uh, legal policy that the province provides its militia members with a pension of $8,636 a year if they're disabled in the line of duty. I would submit to you that in a small Chinese uh, fishing village, that amount of money can actually reinforce morale and influence uh, behavior. And I think we'll see further efforts, further local policy efforts to try to optimize support to these militia to ensure that they will do what they're asked to do uh, if called to do so across a range of contingencies. My final point is I do have uh, some, uh, some concern about these uh, irregular forces. I think uh, one reason we are trying, Connor and I are trying to do this research ahead of time is to raise awareness so there won't be some sort of surprise at the last minute, such as during a, perhaps a U.S. freedom of navigation operation in the South China Sea in which maritime militia forces are involved in some sort of uh, harassment or close proximity activity akin to the 2009 impeccable incident, and there is there is uh, there is some sort of accident or unintended encounter. I think we need to get out ahead of this issue, uh, increase discussion and awareness, including with uh, Chinese uh, counterparts. Uh, so let me turn this over to uh, Connor to give you some more details, and we'll be happy to discuss this further, whatever time we feel is Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank. Thanks for uh, hosting this event. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it quick. Um, I just wanted to highlight the importance of documenting these incidents and these encounters. Um, just just the photos of the impeccable incident allowed us uh, to track the names and the numbers of the vessels involved, um, specifically uh, vessel F8399, uh, the one that was trying to grapple the towed array. Uh, and through uh, Chinese open sources, we're able to find the name of the uh, pilot who owned the uh, who piloted the vessel during the incident um, and trace him back to this company based out of Sanya that is they're the ones who run this maritime militia organization and have added new vessels uh, specifically this uh, new uh, command and supply ship that allows them to uh, sustain operations down into the Spratleys um, and just, uh, I guess, highlight the, the very local nature of this. Uh, to figure out this force, you really have to dig down into the grassroots, go through the weeds, and trace the companies that they belong to, who they're working with, who's the local officials driving this, because it does come down to uh, personal relations and uh, you know, how much effort. It's, it's, a, it's a civil military effort. Uh, at the local level, county and below, and extending the civil military integration uh, as a preparation for military, uh, maritime military struggle, as stated in the latest uh, defense white paper, out into the maritime realm. 
and uh, I'll just cut it short there. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have it. Uh, thank you. So, any uh, follow-ups? Uh, yes, please. Eric. Hi. Thanks for taking a look into this um, issue. I was wondering, with the recent things in the news happening in Indonesia and also happening way out in Argentina, if there is a concern... Let me just recap here. One sec. When the Chinese went into um, Africa in oil exploration, uh, it was mostly commercial actors who went in first, creating some problems for the government, and then that prompted them to take a more central role in what happened. I'm wondering how much central authorization is happening with these militias, and do you find that they're mostly organized at the local level, and then they've sort of picked up some steam, and now the central government might get more involved, or if the central government is directing this in some sort of way? I'm not sure if your research has touched on that at all, and in which case would have some implications for the operations further afield from the South China Sea, if this is something that's being organized at a high level, or if it's individual fishermen thinking, oh, you know, they've done it, else they've done it elsewhere and at other times, maybe we can get away with something that isn't, that looks like China might be conducting it, but it's really individuals sort of getting too big for their britches and then causing problems. Um, I hope that makes sense. Oh, you've, uh, you've touched on some important points here. Um, there are multiple actors with multiple interests. And I think in looking at the maritime militia as a whole, it's useful to think of a very, uh, a very steep pyramid with a very broad base. There are, there are thousands of these personnel uh, and ships, but the vast majority are engaged in very low intensity, basic operations, very close to China's shores. So the types of issues that uh, might perhaps uh, concern the US Navy, even though obviously we're solely giving our personal views here, um, or perhaps uh, other policymakers, it tends to be, uh, we're, we tend to be talking about a much uh, smaller proportion of very elite units, uh, such as the leading maritime militia of, of uh, Hainan uh, province. Beyond the so-called near seas, uh, the East China Sea, the South China Sea, and the Yellow Sea, I think, at least in our research so far, it's much more difficult to say uh, what role maritime militias might have uh, out there. The vast majority of these units are focused, uh, the elite units are focused in these seas, which are home to all of China's uh, unresolved uh, island and maritime claims and I don't I don't think that is uh, that is a coincidence um, I think within the incidents that tend to occur in those zones um, often Chinese maritime militia participation is specifically authorized and directed uh, by higher level uh, Chinese authorities they would not tolerate I believe a situation in which, uh, various uh, regular fishermen were causing international relations problems for the central uh, government. I think there is some complexity at the margins regarding the, the, the constant illegal harvesting of, uh, uh, of giant clams and sea turtles and those types of endangered species. Um, we have done uh, research uh, previously on the Tanmen militia on the east coast of Hainan province, and we will shortly have a piece uh, in uh, Scott's inbox uh, going further in depth with the Tanmen uh, militia. And they are highly involved, as was shown in a BBC documentary, in the illegal harvesting of these uh, rare uh, giant clams. I think that's clearly a case in which uh, the central government would like to control that more, but on the other hand, if someone is going to poach those clams from the central government's perspective, it certainly shouldn't be illegal Filipino fishermen. Uh, so there, the, the Tanman militia can probably play into that space to a certain extent. 
but I don't think large amount numbers of maritime militia actors are allowed to go out and do things at great variance with uh, the interests of Chinese uh, sovereignty claims and highly sensitive policy of that nature. They can probably take advantage of the fact that they're entrusted with supporting those types of activities to get some more uh, some more uh, lucrative uh, clam and sea turtle harvests for themselves. And even when they may violate China's local policy and international laws in that regard, rather than having them see, be seen as being at fault in an international context, China will work to protect its, uh, its own. Yes, I think so. Uh, our research has not gone into the issue with the recent uh, Argentine uh, Argentine fishing issue. Uh, that's I'm hoping Simsec will be covering this in depth. Do you want to just take a, a couple more questions? Because I saw a couple hands, but we're running out of time, and then just answer the. Uh, and I think Jerry had a, a question as well, so you can do just a lightning round. Um, Andrew, uh, I think it's important that everybody uh, appreciate that the maritime militia exists within the context of one of the world's largest fishing fleet. The numbers are staggering. There are close to 700,000 motorized fishing Chinese fishing vessels. 250,000 of them are called uh, open sea fishing, which means they can go out to within the capability to sh uh, fish within China's EEZ. Another almost 3,000 are what they call distant water fisher that go to South America, off the coast of Africa, and what have you. Again, the largest fishing, largest distant water fishing fleet in the world. And so uh, it, there are lots of resources available to form militia units. And the question I have for you or to, to ask you to uh, elaborate on is Connor and I talked a little bit before this, but I was surprised to learn that the maritime militia is essentially uh, this gun for hire, that they can, they can be paid for and chartered by the Navy or by the Coast Guard or, or somebody else to go do a mission. As long as you're willing to foot the bill, the maritime militia is ready to go. And if you could elaborate on that interesting phenomena, it would be interesting. Do we, uh, we collect a few Yeah, did you want to just uh, collect another one or two, and then we'll... Yeah. <coughs> I was wondering if you could care to uh, hypothesize about how the fishing fleet might be used uh, to complicate uh, the interactions that we're having with regard to the artificial islands that have been created in the South China Sea, or how they... You know, given the, the negative reaction to their interference with Impeccable in 2009, uh, will they interfere with U.S. naval operations on the high seas? My question is, is there any sources, are there any sources in international maritime law that address maritime militias? Let me uh, address quickly those three issues in turn, and uh, Connor may have uh, some things to add in whatever time we have before Scott gives us the hook here. Um, Admiral McDevitt rightly raises uh, the issue of a dual chain of command. So the maritime militia always have to re re uh, they always have to report to the PLA chain of command through the PLA, uh, the People's Armed Forces uh, uh, detachments locally. But they can as well uh, be employed by other organizations uh, of China's government for various types uh, of missions. So this adds to the complexity of understanding the command and control, but I think it shouldn't take away from our understanding that this is indeed 
a, a state actor in many uh, contingencies. And uh, as we have published in some of our other uh, work, uh, including uh, a paper uh, for the Admiral in his uh, broad-ranging series on China as a maritime uh, power, which I commend to everyone. It's on the CNA uh, website. Um, you can see all, all kinds of language and policy uh, approaches, uh, uh, statement uh, phrases such as uh, Catching government fish and ca uh, casting nets of sovereignty is one of one of my favorite ones, and it's it's incredibly important to point out that China has a ready basis uh, for forming this uh, fleet from within the maritime economic sector. Uh, various personnel and ships. Uh, register within uh, the maritime uh, militia and then are available uh, for use there and are motivated by various uh, types of incentives. But th this is this overall foundation China has as a maritime power uh, offers many options for trying to further its interests, including through the militia. Um, to Jerry's question, uh, I, I am concerned that if and when China w chooses to try to make freedom of navigation operations more uncomfortable for the U.S., uh, we are likely to see more involvement of maritime militia in close proximity to U.S. vessels operating near artificial Chinese features in, for example, uh, the South China Sea. And I'm not sure that China sees the impeccable incident as uh, necessarily a failure, especially because, as far as I know, the U.S. never publicly uh, documented that maritime militia involvement. So that's a space that I think bears watching, and I think uh, the U.S. needs to get out ahead of that narrative so that there isn't an unfortunate and potentially escalatory uh, misunderstanding in that uh, in that uh, in that regard. Finally, regarding international law, it's a complex issue. Uh, neither of us are lawyers, but we do have some great colleagues in Newport, and one of them, uh, James Kraska, has written a piece on China's maritime militia, which I've linked to on my website, and I can uh, get you the information on. So, uh, Connor, is there anything you'd like to add um, there? I guess the only the only thing I'd add on that uh, is guns for hire is a little bit of a stretch of a, to describe it. Um, it's very difficult to trace the funds going around um, and Chinese sources probably won't reveal it, but we do know that it is uh, local military organs and local, uh, local governments are, they're the ones who are, who foot the bill for militia development, training, uh, arming, uh, setting them up compensation, uh, it's built into, into the laws, which is difficult to find. Compensation, it's a little bit difficult to figure out who that comes from, especially if there are multiple ent entities, as we've documented, employing the militia and taking operational command of them. Um, it's another one of those areas that really merits further digging. And we'll cover that in further installments of our series. Thank you all very much. Great, thank you.